Okay, home stretch, here we go. The last speaker, Nigel Swaby. I asked him what he did for fun, he's like, I golf. I was like, come on. He's like, no, really. <laughs> Take it away. All right, don't be fooled by this mop-topped hobbit. He's a symbolic of the reason our country is in the Great Recession today. Meet Casey Saren of Sacramento, the, tonight, the topic of tonight's presentation, how I got involved with the stupidest man in the world. <laughs> In 2006, the real estate market was hot, so Casey bought eight houses in eight months in four different states and defaulted on most of them. At age 24, he owed $2.2 million and didn't even have a job. <laughs> in an attempt to save the houses, he started a blog called IamFacingForeclosure.com. It was the beginning of the housing crash, and his story was so unbelievable, he attracted attention from local and national press and received an incredible amount of web traffic. At the same time, I started a real estate blog and asked Casey to do an interview for it. I even said I would tell the story from his perspective. What he didn't tell me was days before my story was published, he was on the cover of USA Today's money section. <laughs> People were drawn to the story as a train wreck and would offer good advice Casey would promptly ignore. He would do the opposite, like get into more debt through a fake corporation and refuse to get a job. CNET called him the world's most hated blogger because he attracted ne negativity. Casey had ridiculous sayings. If he managed to get up before noon twice a week, he'd call that 30% success. He, he would terminate contracts by simply saying no deal. He'd call his blog audience W2 losers because he disdained work. After every misstep, massive focused action was promised, and he'd keep us hooked with the line, good things are coming. In March 2007, Casey came to Salt Lake looking for possible real estate deals and to investigate an investment opportunity for some of his corporate credit line his parents guaranteed. The credit company froze the account when it realized Saren was investing in a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> One night, he begged his audience to help him raise $200 to pay a notorious lender, Cash Call. After raising nearly $1,000, two days later, he announced the purchase of $4,000 worth of a penny stock. He also went on vacation to Arizona for a week. In June of 2007, with no real estate left and calls from the FBI coming in, Casey decided to take up a loose invitation to go to Australia. He called his wife and told her to take him to the airport, giving her only one hour's notice. Throughout this time, I had always thought something productive was going on behind the scenes and offered moral support. I was wrong and I considered Casey diverted, deserting his wife to be a horrible decision. I officially became a hater and joined the dark side. <laughs> like everyone predicted, Casey wasn't welcomed home when he returned from Australia. Recordings of his planned book were unearthed from an unprotected server and widely published on the web. A loss mitigation specialist successfully sued Casey for $1,500. <laughs> there were a lot of characters that made this story compelling, like Nacho, a hater who won a two-hour interrogation in the Begathon, Dwayne Legate, who tried to help Casey, but wound up actually hiring his wife a divorce attorney, and Lost Met Pro, who sued Casey and won. After many stops and restarts, the blog was successfully sold for 50000 Most of that money went to pay the ex-wife's credit cards Casey had relied on, his former publisher, and Lost Met Pro. Casey was living on corporate credit back in his childhood bedroom. Casey wanted to get his ex-wife back, and a former advertiser paid him to live in Phoenix and write a book with him. Despite her dislike of publicity, he agreed to go on Dr. Phil. The ex didn't show, and she used a letter read by Dr. Phil to dump Casey on national TV. <laughs> <laughs> the Phoenix Project failed about 30 days after launch, and Casey returned to his parents' house, where he tried several other short-lived blog adventures. He finally succumbed to a real job, selling herbal Viagra online. <laughs> In 2008, a core group of haters thought it would be funny to bring Casey back to Salt Lake. He was living in a motel, and I offered to put him up if he would help me move and do things around the house. <laughs> after, after three days of living in my basement, I was forced to kick him out when he stole my truck. <laughs> Completely out of money and credit, Casey embarked on a minimalist lifestyle. He bought an old van, and tried to pan for gold and live off the land. His plan was to use solar panels to power his laptop so he could share his story with the world. One night, after claiming to have seen a comet, he decided he was destined to own a private island. He developed a website and broadcast videos of himself pitching the idea to friends, family, and church members. His only supporters turned up to his birthday party in the park, and the venture failed. 
Since all this began, Casey has been foreclosed on six times, lost his marriage, bankrupted his parents who recently lost their home in Sacramento. He's burned many investors, advertisers, and friends. Still jobless and now squatting in an abandoned house, he spends his days online dreaming up new schemes for his next comeback. In July, he was named one of the 20 worst internet losers, and an active community of haters still exists. <laughs>